All right, folks, I just got uh, the AHP Alpha TIG 200X. This is the 2016 version, uh, the latest one out. I think it's also referred to as version 4. So just a quick overview. I've had a few people who have seen this over the last few days, and uh, they're pretty intrigued by it, especially with the new accessories that come with it. So uh, just a little bit of information on it. I've already unpacked it. There's no need for you to see me pull everything out of the box as I do it. But uh, cardboard box that it came in. Uh, box came pretty much unscathed one little bit of compression in one of the upper corners But inside that box the unit itself is put inside of this foam enclosure uh, the Foam roughly an inch thick or so a little bit thicker on the ends, but pretty much an inch thick really good protection for it um, and on the end of it is the box full of accessories and uh, Some people previously were complaining everything's loosely thrown in a little bit I guess better packed inside the accessories box but what exactly comes with it first of all an upgrade to the torch uh, the torch that you get now it's a WP 17 flex uh, it is a flex head torch so a little bit of movement on that it's not quite a like a CK super flex hose but this hose is a improvement over what came out at least what I saw that was coming out with the earlier versions uh, the hose itself 12 feet long the lead is 12 feet long it comes with a half inch DINs connector uh, for TIG welding. Go ahead and pop that in on the negative side. And then the gas pigtail, it's a decent length. It's roughly, what is that, maybe 20, 22 inches long. That goes in, snap in, quick disconnect for the gas. And it is a really nice length. It's not so tight that you've got strain on here. There is a strain relief right here as well, however. But it's not so short that uh, this is under strain. So. This itself, the torch, the WP-17 flex head, great improvement over what used to come in the earlier versions. Next over is the flow meter. These used to be shipped loose, and uh, you can see it's now boxed, protected in nice foam. It used to be a dual dial simple flow meter. They've now gone to uh, a floating ball, and uh, it's got two scales on it, one for argon, one for carbon dioxide. But uh, much better an upgrade uh, for the regulator in terms of what was previously sent out with this. And it's packed much more nicely. Along with that, the, uh, a gas hose to, to connect the regulator to a port that's on the back of the welder itself. Gas hose about six feet long. Next up, the dreaded foot pedal. Earlier versions of this foot pedal used to have an amperage knob on the side that you actually had to twist and dial to select your amperage of the foot pedal. That is no more. Uh, the foot pedal comes with a standard uh, seven pin connector, which connects into the seven pin port on the front of the welder itself. And you're still gonna find people that complain about the design and style of this foot pedal, and I get it. I understand that if you were raised and if you learned on a traditional foot pedal with your heel on the floor, where the entire thing kind of rotates at a pivot point by your heel, this is gonna be awkward. I've used this. It, real, it initiates a good arc when first depressed. It's got nice modulation of the amperage as you go through the cycle of the foot pedal. And it terminates the arc nicely as well. I've seen other inexpensive foot pedals that really are kind of not great. I'd consider them disposable. Not this one. I think this is pretty good. Give it a chance. If you're new to welding and you use this to start out with, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. I've used this in a couple of ways. I've used this with my heel sitting on the flat part and depressing this with kind of the arch of my foot or the ball of my foot. I've used it that way. And the other way I've used it is in a traditional way with my heel on the floor and pressing it here. Now the issue here is that it's, you can see it kind of scooches around on the surface at all. There are three holes that are cast into the base plate of this here. See if you can see those three holes. So you could attach this to, you know, a piece of wood or something that's got a little bit of higher coefficient of friction so it's not sliding around on the floor. But for the foot pedal, I, no complaints. No complaints. It's perfectly adequate. So if you're starting out welding, no problems. Uh, foot pedal, the, uh, the uh, cable on this, it's probably 15 or 16 feet long. So good enough there. Moving on to the electrode holder for stick welding. Uh, this is about a 10-foot cable on here. Again, it's got a uh, half-inch DINs connector. 
and uh, it's decent quality. You know, it's got pretty good tension on the head hair, standard mill marks in there for holding the electrode straight out 90 degrees or at a 45. No complaints, nothing to uh, gripe about with that. The work cable for a 200 amp uh, welder, again, this works fine. It's also got a uh, half inch DINS connector. And sure, you want to grumble about this clamp. If you've got a different one, use it. This, however, perfectly adequate for a starting welder at this price point. This welder, I paid $680 for it. So it's, it's dual voltage, 110, 220. The welder comes with a 220 volt three prong plug on it. And if you want to use it on the uh, 110 volt or regular household outlet current, plug the machine into this pigtail, plug this end into your wall outlet, and you're going to lose a little bit of performance on it, but that's to be expected. A 200 amp welder, uh, TIG welding, it drops down to about 150 amps max, and uh, stick welding, I think it's 145 max, so you lose a little bit there. Also comes with a trigger uh, for 2T14. This can get zip tied. Um, this is also about 12 feet long. This can get zip tied to the torch. So zip ties are not included. I'm just trying to do this single handed here. But uh, there's a little saddle right on the back there on top, this right here. So you could run a zip tie over that. And then this, oops, again, trying to do this single handed with the camera in one hand, uh, run a zip tie through that slot, that hole. And that'll secure the trigger to the torch. It's got a seven pin connector. Can't see through the plastic. There we go, seven pin connector. So you're either gonna have your foot pedal or your, um, your finger trigger, your torch trigger in there. And then you would use the trigger to actuate the welding cycle, okay? We'll talk about that a little bit more. Down the far end, last thing that comes in the box, they do send you a starter kit of consumables. Uh, nothing fancy here. Um, five, six, and seven. Looks like five, six, and seven uh, cups. You've got a uh, long cap, a short cap for the 17 series torch. You got a collet uh, holder, and then they send you three collets. The collets are all different sizes. I haven't measured them. Obviously, they're still in the package, but three different sizes. So I don't know if it's uh, you know 0 0.040, uh, 16th and 3/30 seconds, or if it's 16, 3, 30 seconds and an eighth. But uh, that's what comes in the package. They've definitely upgraded the accessories. Uh, the torch is a nice upgrade from what used to be in. The regulator is a nice upgrade from what used to be in there. The foot pedal, it's nice not having that dial on the side of it anymore. And then the remainder of the stuff, I think, is pretty much what used, they used to send out in the earlier versions. But that's it for the accessories. So the welder itself, the controls of the welder, uh, the fit and finish on the welder, it's really nice. You know, nice color, a little bit of plastic, a little bit of metal. Uh, starting on the back, you've got your power switch on the back here. Down below is your gas connector. That's pretty much it uh, on this side. On one side down here, there is a little panel. Going to be tough to read. Uh, even in person, it's tough to read. But it gives you an idea for uh, different settings. If you're doing stick, if you're doing TIG, uh, if you're using 110 or 220, it gives you amperage settings as well as uh, duty cycles, maximum duty cycles. The front end of it, the business end of the welder, it does come with a plastic cover that covers the control panel. The outlet for the fan is down here. And down at the very bottom, uh, you're plugging on the left for gas. You've got negative electrode. You've got your seven pin connector uh, for either the foot pedal or the uh, torch trigger and then your positive electrode. Those can be switched around depending on if you're using TIG or stick or whatever. Plastic cover up top. This kind of comes up roughly 90 degrees or so. And then if you push a little bit further, kind of snaps into a detent so it locks up in place. Uh, the actual controls real quick. There are a couple LED lights up top. Foot pedal light illuminates if you've got the foot pedal connected. The uh, OC or overcurrent light, that's if uh, you overheat the welder itself if you exceed the duty cycle. Uh, that will eliminate the welder. You want to stop welding obviously. Don't turn it off. Uh, leave the fan running so it can cool down. And once it's cooled down and the uh, overcurrent light uh, goes out, you can turn the welder off then on to reset it and then start welding again. 
you've got your uh, three digit readout here for your main welding amps. For 220, TIG is 200, stick is 195. And for 110, um, the TIG is 150. That's when the stick goes down to 145 for your max welding amps. There are four rocker switches. The top left one, this is for, for selecting between TIG and stick. This one, AC-DC, those two are self-explanatory. Uh, you got a 2T, 4T switch here, and then you've got a three position rocker here. This is for your pulse function. Uh, selecting down, the pulse is off. And then there are two levels of pulse on here. Uh, the top one is for kind of a slower pulse. Uh, there are two concentric rings on that pulse frequency knob. The inner ring is for one half hertz or 0.5 hertz up to 10. That's where you'd use this one. If you want to go with a higher setting, select that rocker switch to the middle setting and now your pulse you can go from uh, 10 hertz up to 200 hertz. Oops, I'm off a little bit there. So that's that's a, a change on this 2016 version is uh, the pulse now goes up to 200 hertz. I think it was lower. I don't know what it was on the previous ones, but that's it. Um, so again, tick stick, pretty self-explanatory. AC-DC, pretty self-explanatory. People sometimes have questions about 2T4T. 2T4T just has to do with the number of trigger actuations, the number of times you have to depress or let up the trigger in order to uh, complete a welding cycle or start through termination of the welding arc. So if I'm on 2T, all that means is I press the trigger, it starts the arc, I do my weld. When I'm done, I release the trigger, the arc terminates, the welding cycle is done. One, two, that's 2T, two activations to uh, two actuations to complete a welding arc. 4T, a little bit different, it brings in some of the controls we'll talk about again, but 4T is, this is when you want to have a starting amp cycle, your main amp cycle, and then your end amp cycle. So the starting amp and end amp will generally be lower than your main amp, obviously. But for a 4T, when you press the trigger, it's going to initiate an arc at the start amp setting, the start amp weld setting, that's the upper left button. Once you get your puddle going and you're fairly good, now you release the trigger, that's the second actuation, and the welder is going to jump up to whatever you have your main amp setting at, okay? So that's going to be your peak amp setting for uh, your weld. When you get to the end of your bead and you want to start your cool down or, or uh, kind of end your weld, you go ahead and press the trigger again, and it's going to go to the upper right button, which is your end amp setting. And then you release the trigger. And that's your fourth activation. That's going to uh, stop the uh, arc. That's going to terminate the arc. So 4T is initiate your start amps, release to go at your uh, main amps, press the trigger again to go to your end amps, and then release the trigger for the fourth time or for the fourth movement, and that's going to uh, terminate the arc and end the arc setting. So that takes care of your whole upper row, your three knobs on top, start amp, main amp, end amp. Okay, moving next down, the bottom left pulse frequency. As I said earlier, um, you can go anywhere from one half hertz. A hertz is one cycle per second, so a half hertz would be roughly one cycle every two seconds, or a pulse every two seconds up to 200 hertz, which is 200 pulses, or 200 cycles per second. Next to that is your pulse amps. Now this is going to be your pulse base, okay? Your pulse setting is going to be made up by those two middle knobs, the top one being your main amp, that's going to be the upper end of your pulse, and then the bottom center, which is going to be, I'm sorry, the, in the picture here, your pulse amps, which is going to be your base pulse setting. So if I have my this is set to 100 right now. So if I set my main amp at 100 and my pulse right now it's on 45, then my pulse is going to consist of bzz at 100 and then it's going to drop down to 45% of that or 45 amps. Okay? You can select how long it goes between the two with the pulse time on. That is that goes from 10% uh, up to, looks like 90%, can't quite read that in the shadows there. But uh, that'll tell you, that's how you set up the ratio between these two is with that. So that takes care of the middle row. 
uh, down below you've got uh, AC frequencies our AC frequency this goes from 40 up to 200 that I believe is an improved range again um, AC frequency allows you to kind of control how can I put this it allows you to control the, the shape of the arc when you're at a lower setting let's say I'm all the way down here at uh, 40 I'm gonna have a very wide fan shaped arc as I increase up to 200 that previously very wide and soft arc is gonna slowly focus down and become more focused I kinda hope that makes sense so when I'm at low my arc coming out of the uh, off the tungsten is wide and as I go up to 200 the arc is going to kind of narrow and become more focused. With more focusing, obviously, you'll get uh, you know more puddle agitation, a little more energy uh, going into uh, the weld bead, so you can get deeper welds that way. Really, just increased focus and uh, increased puddle agitation. Uh, AC balance. We'll kind of think of that as cleaning. You know, using that for aluminum, uh, removing the oxidation or a little bit of aluminum oxide uh, off the surface of it. Um, it works through cathodic etching. This knob, sometimes it's a little bit different than most people are used to. This is based off of electrode positive, so it's a percentage of electrode positive. If I have 20%, very little AC balance, I'm going 20% electrode positive, 80% electrode negative. If I run it up to 80%, now I'm at 80% electrode positive, 20% electrode negative. This is more cleaning. Uh, so when you have more cleaning, the danger there is that uh, you can kind of you can do damage to your tungsten. You can overheat the tungsten. You can melt your tungsten. Uh, you can also shorten. In some ways, you can shorten the duty cycle uh, of what you're working on. So most people work around 30, 45 percent. Kind of figure out where you want to be. You can comp kind of compare the band of cleaning to uh, your bead and adjust as necessary. And the last uh, knob over here is for post flow between 1 and 10 seconds. Uh, that should be pretty straightforward. That's how long your argon gas continues to flow after you terminate the arc. So uh, the more amps you're working with, uh, the hotter your end puddle is going to be. So when you're done adding filler metal, uh, you'd want this higher for higher amperage settings and shorter for lower amperage settings and uh, after you terminate the arc just keep the the torch over the end puddle so the gas can continue to shield it so that's pretty much it for what's up top um, it's a nice welder it's got nice settings the accessory package I think is is pretty good the quality of these accessories it's definitely improvement over what was sent out with uh, the version 1 and the machine has some increased uh, abilities with version 2, version 3, version 4, so to speak. Again, this is for the 2016, I believe it's the version 4 of the AHP uh, Alpha TIG 200X. So, I hope that explains a few things in case you're wondering. Take care. Bye.